Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, my co-partner in crime, Art Kirsch, and I are with the illustrious John Mariani, food and travel writer. Yes, here he is. Drum roll, please. <laughs> John, how Good morning, are you? John. So fooding and then traveling again after two years. So, so John, I have a question for you. I know that things are opening up in New York a lot more where, where you live and uh, all sorts of uh, uh, easing restrictions on masking and restaurants and dining in and things like that, as we have in California, but we're probably a little bit after you. But uh, you are one of the great uh, travel reporters uh, whether it be on the travel or food or other things. And uh, we've been talking for years about, uh, well, the last two years, about you getting back on the road again. I know that uh, uh, John Coleman has taken about three uh, uh, trips back east. Two or three, by, yeah. By plane. In fact, one of them was uh, 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 to a reunion, high school reunion with you guys uh, up there. Uh, but what about your travel plans? Have you begun to feel a little bit more comfortable about traveling, particularly to uh, Europe, well, which uh, is uh, sort of like your second home? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a Europhile, always always have been. Um, I'd much prefer to go to Paris than to St. Louis, Missouri, frankly, or Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia, uh, where I've been a lot. I mean, to those American cities, and I, I love going to them too, but I really do miss uh, Europe. And yes, at this time, at this time of taping, uh, Europe is almost completely open. There's this little business going on in Eastern Europe, which I don't know what will happen there. But um, they, first of all, New York is wide open again. And the other night I drove into the city and for two years, about one of, the, one of those whole years, I didn't go into New York at all. This was either shut down or dangerous. And I remember driving in when COVID hit uh, two years ago and there was nobody in the streets. I mean, it looked like a bomb had dropped. And then as things opened up a little bit more, that got a little better. And But driving into the city for the last year has been a dream. I live in Westchester. I could be in in 35, 40 minutes. Fabulous. The other night, with restrictions lifted and people going out, and it's springtime, it took me an hour. And I realized how lucky I was because I started cursing the traffic again. And when I came across <laughs> Westchester, to Times Square and Broadway, it was as jammed as ever. All the lights and the neon, people crossing the the the, uh, the guys on the on the bikes going down the wrong way of the street to deliver pizza and Chinese food and so forth. Well, out of town, I was looking up at the neon and walking when the the light is wrong, and I'm cursing my head off and saying, uh, "This is great. New York is back." You know? So I'm happy for that. I really, really am, and I expect that that is going to obtain when I start going uh, way to Europe. And in fact, I'm hopping a plane to um, Ireland, which uh, opened up just this past month. Um, and I already hear, you're trying to get through the Aer Lingus now. A month ago, you'd call Aer Lingus and have any, you know, they pick up in like three minutes. Now I try to get a book of passage. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful and maddening at the same time. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to Dublin, which I know quite well to renew my um, um, affection for that city and to see what's new because they have new restaurants and new hotels and places I haven't been and to go back to other places and to do a little investigation for my uh, one, two, three, fourth novel, which is called The Magdalene Laundries. And The Magdalene Laundries is in Dublin, the terrible, terrible place where the nuns used to put um, wayward young teenage girls, uh, whether they wanted to be there or not. Um, that's that's going to be a good mystery. I'll let you know about that. And um, I want to go into Merrion Park. I want to see the statue of, uh, of Oscar Wilde. I want to eat a good um, bangers and mash for breakfast. And I want to have a uh, good fish fry and Guinness and hear some music, Irish music. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm going on to Galway, where I have never been. So anything I write about that adventure um, will be wholly new. And um, that intrigues because, you know, there's a whole lot of places in the world that I have never been. But frankly, at my age, um, the thought of boarding a 22-hour flight to Bangkok at this point does not 
interest me as once as it as much as it once did. If I lived on the West Coast, I might consider going. But um, I think my days in Cambodia and Ceylon and so forth are probably over. But you know, Ireland's you know, it's five and a half, six hours away from JFK, and uh, Paris is seven, and Italy is seven and a half or eight. So that I can handle. Try to go business class if I can, but can't always afford that. Now, John, when you travel uh, and when you pick a destination, as you have now for Ireland, uh, do you do it based on um, the the popular, in other words, most people want to go to Europe as opposed to most people want to go to Bangkok, therefore you are going to report on uh, what your audience is interested in, or do you do it because you haven't been there before? Well, both, but uh, mostly the latter. Uh, the former, you know, I my readers are kind of cosmopolitan and world travelers. Uh, as I said, my choice to not go to deepest, darkest Asia anymore is due to the travel time and the wear and tear on my uh, my body and so forth. Um, that's a real commitment. You can't zip over to, you know, New Delhi for a five-day trip, whereas I can go to Ireland for a five-day trip. I'm going for a week. You know, it's going to be wonderful. So that's a consideration. And uh, Ireland, being my first trip, is kind of dipping my toe into the water after two years of not traveling. I have to remind myself now whether the, the T TSA line, I get that one then how much baggage am I like? I've forgotten these things at this point, but yeah. um, it'll all come back to me. Nice thing about yeah. Ireland, when you get to Dublin Airport on the way back, you go through US security and customs in at the airport in Ireland in Dublin. So when you get back here, you just get off the plane and just walk on out. Mm. That's convenient. Oh, yeah. So uh, are so, there any special precautions that you're taking uh, now that we seem to be at the uh, other end of uh, uh, the pandemic uh, part of uh, uh, COVID? Um, any special uh, precautions that you're taking uh, uh, before you go or that you expect to have to take when you're there? Yes, um, one has to wear a mask on the airplane still, which is fine with me because I don't know who I'll be sitting with. And uh, secondly, under U.S. regulations, I have to be tested in Ireland 24 hours or less before I board the plane back to the United States. Um, other than that, uh, I don't think they're wearing masks there. Um, I, you know, I want to keep my social distance. I'm not gonna, I'm going to go to restaurants, but I'm hoping to be maybe six feet from other tables if possible. Uh, I'm not going to be in large crowds. Um, um, I'll see what I, I'll see how I feel about pubs, um, but um, you know the Irish have gotten through this as well as anybody else, and uh, they do not have soaring um, soaring rates of uh, COVID anymore. Excellent. Now, John, I thought plus I that, plus that I'm boosted. I've got a booster, and I, I feel that everybody I know who has gotten COVID, even with a booster, has a very very mild case, and I'm hoping that I'm healthy enough to be in that category. Yeah. Uh, and take vitamin D, according to Dr. Liz Lister, vitamin D. That's the key. Oh, I just go by whatever Dr. Oz tells me. I put fluorescent light, <laughs> stuff like that. John, I thought I had heard uh, from you that you were considering going to Austria as well as Ireland. Is that still in the books? It's on the book at the moment. Depends upon what happens in uh, the Ukraine and Eastern Europe. As of the moment. Uh, oh, that's true. Austria is very close to so Ukraine. Yeah, very close. Um, Austria is once once part of the Hitler's uh, empire. Yeah. And, um, who knows what's going to happen if everything dies down? Um, I'm due to go on the first of May, and uh, now Austria is one of my favorite places. Um, my wife and I love it, and I adore Vienna. And Salzburg is just—I mean, it's just a Christmas card every day of the year to be in Salzburg. <clears throat> and there's a uh, great skiing, which will be over by the time I get there. There's wine country, which is very, very beautiful. And uh, then there are other cities, uh, a couple of cities that I'm going to go to that I have not been to before, which is great. Just like going to Galway after Dublin, I'm going to Gantz after um, after uh, Vienna. But the food's great in Vienna. The hotels like the soccer are just as elegant as ever. And I always like to do my little uh, third man tour which took place in, in Vienna. Um, 
you know, the sewers are there, the um, the what do you call it, the wind, the the, the, the wheel that goes around, and and the uh, amusement park where Orson Welles uh, takes Harry Lyme is is there, yeah. and um, and always working on my novel. So my fourth novel is going to actually be called Going After Harry Lyme. So I'm going to do some research. Um, Harry Lyme is a fictional character, of course, invented uh, by Carol Reed for yes. the movie. Um, wholly fictional, but a, a awful man selling bad penicillin to hospitals and children. Yeah. And, um, but it's a great, great movie. And uh, all of those places, you can go on a, you can go on a third man tour in, uh, in Vienna. And it's a lot of fun. You can see, oh, there's the corner where Orson Welles peeks his head out and where the cat comes out. And there's the Ferris <laughs> wheel. And, there, it's, and there's the soccer hotel where he stays. So that's a lot of fun. So in order to get my crime novel, which is called Going After Hi Harry Lime, absolutely perfect. I'm going to research that while I'm there. And eat lots of Wiener schnitzel. Well, well it I sounds say, like you're going to have a lot of fun. And, and uh, quite frankly, um, you've been so thoughtful and uh, about... Uh, going out to restaurants and travel during these last two years, you're sort of like our canary in the uh, coal mine. Uh, the fact that you're getting ready to uh, go to Europe uh, maybe is a good sign. Airlines are, should take note uh, that they're going to be inundated with uh, 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 people who are ready to get back to uh, life as we knew it. Europe is going to be antsy, though, depending upon what comrade Putin has in store. And I'm sure a lot of people who thought of going anywhere near Eastern Europe to mm -hmm. uh, Croatia, Albania, Slovenia, uh, are rethinking um, that idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, we look forward to your report when you come back. And um, uh, thank you for uh, uh, forging the way and leading the way and, uh, uh, and letting us know that it's uh, perhaps safe to travel again. It's the maverick life I've chosen. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.